Open world, Sneb, should be easy. There should be no level of challenge in the open world. How do you respond why? to that? My, my question is why? Why should, why should open world have no challenge whatsoever? Because that's the way the game has always been. Okay, I mean... It is the I refuge. Like... The refuge for the people who have 17 jobs right. and nine wives. I've got nine wives, Snub. I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> I, I'm under the... I don't know why people are so opposed to uh, one event every now and then, a big group event, having some level of challenge to it. I think every other there's there's maybe like two or three things in the entire game for open world content that actually have some level of difficulty. And the difficulty is mainly in the organization. I am actually not convinced that there would be massive uproar if there was a difficult event added to the game as long as it's nothing to do with the story and it doesn't lock the mount. Okay. Do you agree so, with that I mean, take? Let's, do, let's do, define do this. If it has anything to do with the lore, people are going to be upset. Anything. Um, and wouldn't you argue okay, that but, okay. Triple Trouble has something to do with the lore? I and would, that not experiencing that means you don't get the full satisfaction of the game? I think it has a very tenuous connection to the lore. Like, the idea is, is that Scarlet was doing some shit and it, like, disturbed the Omega Worm, right? And the Omega Worm emerged. But I would say it is a very ch tangential piece of the story. I, I'm not sure I fully understand what the story argument for Su Wan is. Because you complete the story chapter and that's the story. I guess it's like an alternate ending, if you want it to be like that. Well, no, it's, it's but, part of the ending. You, you do it before the final battle is the Oh, canon. well, yeah. But do you have... Well, I guess there is a little bit of story stuff behind it. Yeah, and they were yeah, quite. I guess there's a the little they bit were, of talk. They, after. Actually, they actually were very clever about this. Um, in order to see all of that lore, you still get it if you lose. The, the actual outcome is identical, actually, um, if you lose Dragon's End. The lore doesn't change. They were clever about that. Well, then why is it a big deal if you don't lose anything by losing? I think it's, it was all. I think if. It, oh, man. I wish I had an alternate dimension thing. Because I would love to see what this looks like if the turtle just had been given away, um, you know, as some, like, random part of the story. You know what's interesting about Triple Trouble? What? That, that Suwon doesn't have, but maybe should. I don't think that you need to instance it. I think that you should have the ability, like Triple Trouble, for guilds to kick it off. Yeah, that is big, actually. Yeah, that is huge. Because Triple Trouble, as well as, like, what, Tequadal and some of those other bosses, the guild itself can kick off that event um, when it wants to. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that, actually. It's a, I hope they... I mean, I don't think they would ever reuse that system, um, but I I would hope that they would. Why it's not? It's a very good one. Because, dude... Now, now Su Wan is there different are no guilds. because... There are no guilds in Guild Wars, Snap. That's why. Uh, I, I mean, do you really... Do you think that... Which system do you think is better? Having it be an instanced piece of content or like like having it be I think the um, I think they're more likely to make it like a Dragon Storm, right? So it's instance and you can start it whenever. So you can like load up your own copy of the map basically, compared to um being able to like start it on any map with this dynamic thingy. I think that that they probably view that as a bit convoluted, honestly. A bit weird. And also um inherently less accessible, right? Because it's only accessible to guilds, as opposed to just anyone, right, who um, just makes a squad, right, and just goes. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, and to be clear, so um, I, I think, you know, what you've been saying here, really, I think it's a really good point, actually. What's the difference between instancing it when communities kind of just, like, um, lock themselves off anyway? Well, what I really like about the open world is that you have the ability to interact with the broader community. So my argument here would be that the my complaint about making everything instanced would mean that if I'm going to do runs with Hardstuck, right? We are never going to do it with anyone 
outside of Hardstuck. Ever. Right? If that was the case. Here's a genuine question. What is the difference? When Triple Trouble came out, communities rose up around it. When Sue Wan comes out, that doesn't happen. I mean... A little bit, yes, but I do want to say that the community kind of did actually rise for Sue Wan. Maybe not as much as, like, Triple Trouble. A little but, bit. A but people yeah. really went for it. In a different way. It, right? Like, I, I think people did go for it. There actually was one guild, I believe, on the NA server built around it. And look, we there, there was obviously a little bit of interest, right? Like, we gained, like, 5,000 members plus joining the Hardstuck Discord to come and do this stuff. So I think there is definitely that, that energy there. But yeah, I mean, look... As Snap pointed out, a lot of the organizer guilds, they're long gone, right? Like, guilds to community is gone. Um, you know, all the Tequadal guilds, they're dead, right? Triple Trouble is still around a little bit, kind of like hanging on there. Um, but yeah, yeah like the, the culture has definitely uh, shifted a fair bit. But I, I do want to really emphasize this. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm ludicrously optimistic. And maybe I've just been really, really lucky. Maybe it's on EU. Maybe it's I haven't played enough on NA. I don't know. Um, but... In general, it's, it's I, very found, different I, I found that players are actually pretty willing, you know, if you show them how, they are actually pretty willing to learn about some stuff. They are willing to listen. I want to loop back around, actually, to um, the, this, this idea of instance content versus open world, and open world being challenging versus just, like, locking all of the harder content away. Um, because I, th I think this is actually the core of the discussion. To me, that is like the heart, the beating, putrid, festering heart of this entire conversation. Because I think a lot of people would say, oh, you know, all content that requires challenge should be instanced, right? All of it should be instanced. And now, I understand that's a valid perspective and that a solution, abs a, a solution absolutely is to just like make a Dragonstorm style instance. And, and that would make people happy. Right? Like, I, this is the thing that's where I think it gets really difficult. Would that make people happy? Yeah. Yes. But I would be well, incredibly... Would con oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think you're definitely going to um, mention this, actually, Snap. But I, I think I'd like to hear you speak about this, actually. Sorry, uh, Snap. But wait, I can't do it. I'm so... Go, no, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. I'd love to hear you talk about this. Because my concern, and I think this would definitely happen. I think anyone who thinks this wouldn't happen is kind of laughing. But it would become incredibly gated. Right, like if you did. This, oh yeah. Right, like if you wanted to get people into, would sell Dragon's End. That, it, that's what would happen. Yeah, Everyone yeah. just sell it. If you wanted to get into like an organized Dragon's End, right, for the instance version, man, like if you're not in that community, because right now you can join a Hardstuck group without being in the guild. You can join Sneb's maps without being in the guild. You can join Emmy. You can join Quan Punch. You can join fucking Pinko. Right. You can join uh, AX. Right. Like uh, Will's groups. You you don't have to be in our community. You could like randomly show. You could randomly show up. Right. You could just like load in and oh shit, it's Will Pog. Right. Oh, it's Sneb. Oh, it's Teapot. Right. You could just load in. If it was instanced, you can never do that. Right. That would <laughs> never happen. Right. And, and not because we wouldn't want it. It's just that. It's not, that would mechanically be prohibited, right? Because it's an instance, yep. right? Like, it's just not how it works. There's no, like, click and join. It would be, oh, we're tagging up and we tag up in our guild and no one else can join. Not because we don't want you to, but because you can't. You, you literally can't, right? Like Marionette, right? Like, for example. Um, and that's a little interesting, uh, I think I think that's a very major concern because one of the things that I like about open world is the fact that you can just meet, you can just like in have like random encounters with other players, right? Like just random encounters with new players. And yeah. I think it is a really good place to learn. But yeah, I, I think I'll kind of stop there. I, I think I've introduced the idea it, where it I want to go. It takes a little bit of yeah. the MMO out of it, right? That that that's uh, that's the problem for me. Look, I I am um, with what? Oh, now I'm forgetting. Was it release? Release? Was that mm -hmm. Before in the chat? Yeah. With what they were saying, sure, I agree. If make it instanced, um, no one would ever do the open world one again. Like all of the good players that do instance content, they would never touch the open world version ever again. That's the consequence. Mm. And that's why I'm advocating against it because I would only play the instanced version. I would only do that. Because then I can have absolute control over what's going on. The the beauty about having it open world is that there's a little bit of chaos. <laughs> yeah. And as much as some people hate that, it's actually kind of cool because that's open world. Right? 
That's that's the oh my gosh friend that I've never met before. You and I have to team up and figure this out. That's the beauty of open world. I like that. It's dynamic. The struggle right? though, and it's yeah, accessible. That's it. Right, like the thing about yeah, it, it is accessibility, right? Because open world right now is a bit of a bridge, right? Like players who might join us for an open world event, well, maybe they'll also try a strike mission or whatever, right? Or, or just some yeah. other area of the game. Whereas yeah. if you completely separate players into all these different categories and you we make will never a, interact. Yeah, you'll never interact, right? You never have never an interaction. interact with those players ever, which and is it sad because I like right? meeting new people. You know, and I think widening the gap in an already incredibly divided community that, you know, a lot of people think is very gatekept, I, I think that's really, I think it's dangerous. Um, I think it would make the game way less accessible, like getting into the end game content significantly less accessible. It would also seem less, less active. Accessible. Yeah, It would seem sure. way less active. Pe people are complaining about activity now. Imagine if every event was, uh, was instanced. I, I promise you, I would never play open world if it was all instanced because it would just be so easy to go into a community say hey we're gonna absolutely smash every boss we fight we're gonna be organized have subgroups etc etc pick 50 people that know what's going on put them all in a group and uh you just slaughter everything but the the sad part is that you'd never make any new friends i guess that's why i like the old system <laughs> because you had you had guilds like Triple Trouble and uh, ATT yeah, and, and others. those guilds would, would not exist in the same way anymore, right? Because um, right now, the Triple Trouble guilds, they put in LFG and they're like, hey, we need more people, like we're calling worm hunters, right? <laughs> and, and everybody just sort of jumps in and people join that guild and join that community. And that's like really cool. There, there are communities that do that for Heart of Thorns metas. Like this, this exists because of open world. You instance all that crap, Suddenly those guilds become like private, right? It's like invite only. Like they might advertise in the LFG or something, but that sort of natural, authentic, just running into this group of adventurers that are doing this cool thing together it no longer exists. Mm. And I think that'd be a great loss for the community. A great loss. Yeah. Um, and... And obviously, like, if you were to do this, you would obviously nerf the open world. Because you know what? It's a bit of an interesting thing, actually. Like, They'd have to. They'd you, have no choice. Yeah, because if, the, if the you know, the performance would go down a lot, right? Because any player who is interested in performance would never do open world ever again. So in other words, the average yeah. skill level in open world would absolutely plummet, right? It would just, like, crater. Yeah, the average DPS would go from, like, mm. 7k because you're taking... Wow, well, that's probably high. I'm just thinking about my groups. I don't know. The average, it would it would go to like 3k maybe right and there'd be no boons and it it would be impossible to get stuff done mm. yeah and, and players would simply never um get exposed to a lot of key mechanics because they'd play with like 3k yeah, dps absolutely. and and one boon and go this is normal right this is how it's supposed to be right they would never yeah. kind of get into and that then the, um, and this is this is where right? the big problem is right then the jump into strike and yes. anything else it's is massive. even worse yeah. than it is yep. now yep 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 that's, far worse that is a huge deal i yep. just don't think people can comprehend how how bad that would be right what do you think would be a good way to um add a more challenging world boss into the game cuz I, I i kind of like i was like oh it's going to be really hard with their living story format how didn't they could do it I, I don't know. I like I to me this is a wicked problem. No matter how you do it, somebody's going to be mad. It's just going to create more problems. I guess if you make it completely like you said before, completely unrelated to anything story whatsoever, but I just don't know how you do that and make it interesting. You know? Um do you not think that um okay, okay, hear me out then, hear me out. Let me give you a hypothetical even the strikes are related to the story i mean they were in the story right so. yeah, yeah but the thing, i think the idea is because there's an easy mode it doesn't matter right like because they've you've basically <laughs> been replaced right so let, let's imagine um that there's a world boss it is literally a giant crab okay it you you just you you look this is the this is the law snub there's a new map it's got a beach you walk along the beach and a giant crab leaps out of the water and starts attacking the group of players. It is, it's just a crustacean. No law. It's not even, it's, it's not even really sentient. It's just an evil, monstrous crab. 
<laughs> Does Jester die to it immediately? Yes, and it's level seven as well. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, its mechanics are harder than Suwon. It has more health okay. than Suwon. Okay. And it's more punishing than Suwon. If you fail the break bar, it spawns another crab. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> Even though that's obviously totally disconnected from the story, don't you think that would be quite satisfying? And also, bonus meme, let's imagine that it's really rewarding. It's like 20 gold if you beat it, right? Even more than <laughs> Suwon. And, and even better, world's first giant crab is three days. Do you not think that would be a satisfying experience? Oh, it would definitely be. The problem is that people would complain aggressively about it not being um, accessible to everyone. Do you think? I, I don't We're, think so. This, it's I, just a wick. It's a wicked problem. No matter what you do in this case, people are going to be very upset. Do you think people will be upset about that? You know what, chat? I want oh, chat yeah. some, but chat. If you guys think people would be upset by a, si a situation like that, nothing to do with the story. It's rewarding. It's hard, right? But it's just to It's just nothing to do with the law. It's like a random NPC that's a big old boss. If you guys think that they would be upset by that, um, let's see. What's the I'll, motivation I'll... for killing it? Twenty That's gold. The other thing, like what? Twenty gold. Twenty gold. So there's no unique rewards either. No, it's like twenty gold. Okay, so it's the best gold. Let, let's strip gold it down. Let's fully strip it. Yeah, I'm stripping all unique rewards. No mounts. No skins. It's ju it. Li it literally drops you a hundred ectos or whatever. So or we're gonna what, call it the golden crab. Yeah, the golden crab, and it just drops a hundred ectos. It's like a cr crab made out of ectos, and it just drops a hundred ectos. To everyone who kills it. So it's the best. It's the best gold per hour in the game. Yeah, it will take you twenty but minutes. It's wicked hard. It's wicked hard, right? It takes twenty minutes to beat this giant crab, right? You're <laughs> gonna need to like have proper builds, CC. You're gonna have to handle ads. I actually really like the ads on Suwon. Oh man, I could gush about that fight. But yeah, the ads on Suwon yeah. are great. It has. It's got ads like mini crabs start spawning, right? Um, there, there's like break bars and shit. You've got to split up. You've got to, like dodge one shot attacks and it's shit, so punishing whatever. That if you don't, yeah. if you don't kill it and you fail the event you know how the karka like suck on your face yep. yeah you you basically have crabs that just crawl all over your body um till the till you destroy it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah 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 blah 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 if you guys think that Ru there would be a your... <laughs> if you guys think there would be a giant problem with that okay uh let's see i want a good emote um hmm. let's see uh put saucy in the chat if you guys think that's not gonna work if you guys think that it's fine and actually people will be okay with it um, put Ratga in the chat. Ratga in the chat, if people would be fine with it. If people would I, I not be fine with be it, big sussy. Mad. Can you tell me why? People think, you think people would be big mad? Yeah, I, I think people would be big mad because you're giving players that are good at the game gold. And they would say, they would view that as unfair. Isn't that what, um, fractals are? Yeah, people view that as unfair. Really? Yes. Really? Wait, I, I'm not sure I believe you. I feel like you're, you're baiting me. Are you baiting me? Well, people probably do to an extent, but the problem is that fractals really aren't that much more gold per hour than like Drizzlewood or anything, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. But if, if you made something that is objectively better gold per hour than anything else in the game okay. in open world, uh -huh. um, and you made it really hard, people would be upset about that. I disagree, kind of. There would certainly be some upset people, because there always is. But I think it would be niche upset. I don't think it would it be It really widespread. depends on how much gold, um, like how different it is. Because the average uh, player doesn't even understand efficient gold farming. Like, like the regular Guild Wars 2 player doesn't go and do leather farm, for example. They never did. Okay. So I don't think they would really be mad. Again, you're gonna have you're always gonna have somebody or some small group of people who be like, "Oh my God, Arena, what are you doing?" But overall, I, I think that would be a very small mad compared to you locked my beloved turtle behind Suwon and you're the devil. Yeah, I don't think that an event like that. Okay, you know what? Okay, let's do another example. Um, Sneb, let's imagine tomorrow. You know, how you get two gold for triple trouble. Let's imagine mm -hmm. that that goes to. 10 gold. Make it okay. 20. 
Well, te- te- well, no, I, I'm being okay. I'm being unnecessarily realistic. Te- let, let's say yeah. four liquid gold and a bunch of rare items. So it drops like it wouldn't te- make it, any difference. It drops it like care. twenty rares. Okay, so such that the net gold from doing triple trouble is twenty gold, approximately. You think people wouldn't care about that? Oh, if it was twenty gold, I think yeah. way more people would do it. So we're, we're talking. And then people would be frustrated when they couldn't do it um, because they don't have commanders and stuff. Like uh, triple trouble isn't something you can just walk into and do, right? Like you kind of you kind of need people to be organized, and people would be upset that they needed that level of organization. I think. I think it would frustrate them. They'd be okay. like, "I want my gold. Why can't I get my gold? I want the gold." Why can they okay. get the gold and I can't get the gold? I, I think that's what it would it would become. I, I, I you know, I, I, I'm, I think you're a little too cynical. I don't think that would happen. Right now. Do you, what do you think would happen? Um, I think that I, I think people would probably really try and go at it, but I don't I don't think they'd demand it to be nerfed. I, I think that they'd still be pretty annoyed that it's hard. Or that it requires organization and stuff, and they, the, I mean the, the whole like commander tag costing too much gold and all of that stuff that would come up again. People would be upset about that. Yeah, I think people would probably move into like, oh yeah, that's just not for me. I'm not going to do it. Category. Yeah, it like it really depends on the, the gold comparison, right? Um, but people would feel like they're missing out, and that that would bother them. Now, the level of enrage, I'm not sure. Like, if they made, imagine if they made Su Wan worth a 40 gold a kill. Oh, what? yes. Yes. What What do you think would happen? Um, People would lose their minds. They would view it as super would unfair. Would they? Would they? Do you think yes, so? Yes, they would. Oh, do- yeah. Because, because you're requiring people to change their builds and, and do all of these things, right? to increase their success rate. And um, when they can't kill it, they would be infinitely, infinitely frustrated. And you can't even blame them. Like if you go and you fail an hour long event or whatever, and the the, the stakes were 40 gold or nothing, um, I think okay. I'd be pretty upset too. Right? So there, you... There'd be like mad rage about that. All right. Yeah. So let's imagine, okay, I think you've hit something really important there, and it's the all or nothing element of it. What if, right. what if we design these events, right? We have Triple Trouble, we have um, Marionette, we have uh, Sue Won. What if we designed it such that the rewards had a slightly non-linear, right? So in other words, it gets, you know, the, the further you go, the better it, better it, better it gets, right? Rather than just like a linear, yeah. linear line. Do you think that would make people not big mad? So in other words, if you get, I, to, I think if you people get 20... view winning as a binary, no matter what. Um, and so I feel like even if people would still be frustrated that they weren't getting the the absolute potential, um, I don't think it would be quite as bad as I described before if it was like all or nothing, but I think people would still be annoyed. I think they would. I'm actually curious if the chat would agree with me on that one, because that, that one I'm maybe a little bit more conflicted on, but I, I think that if it's, if it's like, if it ramps up, um, maybe it's every 20% you kill a boss, yep. you get X amount of gold or something. Uh, I think people would still be annoyed that they didn't get the full potential. Like, if that they'd be annoyed that they didn't get the antique summoning stone, for example. Do you not think right. they'd be... Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, Inks. You, you go. I'll go after. I, I don't think that you're wrong. I think they would be a bit annoyed about it, but I don't, I don't know if it would be, like, pure outrage. One, part of the problem... I mean, Suwan has a lot of problems with the event, actually. In design design wise um but people hate spending an hour or two hours or any significant amount of time anything more than say 30 minutes plus people get really annoyed when they spend 30 minutes or more doing something and get nothing in return for their uh expended energy mm-hmm. so you um, have to give them what, something what problem does this really solve though because look if there was a if if even if it was ramping up, I think people would still just people would be like, "All right, we want to get max rewards." I mean, people do that with like strikes, right? They say we're doing all gold metal or nothing. Like, get in here, right? Um, sure, but you still have a large part of the community that doesn't care about that, 
right? You still have people who do strikes who, who it's aren't. Still, like... It's still dividing, is, is I guess what I'm getting. People would still divide into players that know what they're doing and players that don't. And that's problematic, right? Mm. As we're seeing, right? Because people are like, I cannot complete the meta. So if you did that, people would still, like, open world crap would still only get to, like, 40% or something. And people would still view it as unfair because they're like, how come I can't do it? And then people would be like, oh, well, you have to join a community. And then we just go through this vicious cycle again, right? Well, people are like, like, well, all the communities are getting the gold medal and completing it, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> the, like, communities are going to be like, hey, we are the silver community. We get it to 40% every time guaranteed. People are going to be like, all or nothing, right? The people will still somehow view this as a binary, even if you... Even if you have, like, it might sting less in open world because you'd still get something, but people will still be quite annoyed by it, and people will still divide themselves, right? But but wouldn't it be less Emmy. extreme? Emmy in the mix. Let's go. Well, oh yes, yes, it absolutely would be less extreme, and I I think that's a, I I mean one of my suggestions is that they offer something when you fail, because the failure stings really hard. I'm just not sure how much of the problem that really solves is my point. Right? I think people will still view it as this extreme binary and people will still divide themselves. Um, people will still be annoyed. It might just be slightly less. But it I want Emmy to talk. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Emmy, give us your take. Okay, so my take is that I think there's always going to be people that are upset with the game, right? But most of the time when people are upset, they kind of just like let it slide off their back, right? It's like, you know, like, let's say you joined a silver waste map or something like that, right? And it's not organized, you don't have a commander tag, and then like you fail, and then it's like no big deal, right? You just kind of move on, and you go on with your day. I think if there were a structured sort of like system of rewards, like I'm, I'm just going to keep on using Silver Waste as an example, because I think most of like open world farming communities know of Silver Waste, so it's a good example to use. You get rewards throughout the entire like rotation farming right and then when you fail the final boss most people can acknowledge okay that kind of sucks i really wanted to like be able to do the chess part and all of that sort of thing but then they just go about their day right i think that would be a massive step in the right direction towards maybe pushing people in a non-aggressive way to get better at the game so, I, ac I actually don't think like the people who are upset with that or who are who are upset with suan would be upset with something like that yeah, I kind of disagree because the problem is that even if they were hitting 40, they wouldn't know what they're doing wrong. So you'd you'd have to implement something like I suggested the other day, which is a group event report after like they have in PvP that says, hey, you did X amount of damage, you did this, 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 and this. That way people would have some metric by which to measure their, their impact. Otherwise, people are just going to be like, all right. Well, maybe next time. <laughs> right? They're just, yeah, just not... going to keep throwing themselves at it. Um, and not really know their individual contribution. There's just nothing that tells them that. But I'm not sure that it would encourage them to get much better because they just wouldn't realize what they're doing. Yeah, no, I actually agree with that. I, one of my major criticisms of this game is like, there's no good way to measure your individual contribution unless you're using third party tools, right? Like the most obvious That's one being like ArcDPS or like, you know, even going to like communities and stuff that like tell you, hey, you're doing this wrong. There's just no way to measure that in game. And I know that there would probably be pushback against that because like, I think most MMOs kind of like toe the line of whether or not DPS meters are allowed. But it's like even something I, I use Lost Ark as an example because of, I've been playing that a lot. They have a very simple like post instance sort of thing that tells you like the MVP and it only shows you the MVPs like total damage dealt or like staggered damage dealt, that sort of thing. So it's like a very, I think, in my opinion, non-invasive way to show people like, hey, this person did really well. Therefore, like, you know, the other people might not have done as well, for example. See, I um, <clears throat> I kind of had this a similar idea. I don't know, I didn't I didn't consider it. I, I didn't put the failure aspect into it, but I said when you win, you should get like bronze. Let's say bronze, silver, gold, ah. but only but or maybe you put it bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, or something, or legendary, like the PvP ranks, and. Uh, it spits out a report at the end of the group event when you win or lose. And it just says, this is your impact and this is the reward that you got. Um, and so it gives you a medal based on, you know, it, this would have to be kind of complicated because you want people to be rewarded for revives and for boon output and healing and DPS. 
but it would measure your contribution and doing mechanics, right? Dodging things, um, you know, pressing a button. <laughs> I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> the, the, tu the turret on Tequadal, right? Removing, you'd have to make this quite complicated. But the point is that it would generate the report after and be like, hey, like you did X percent of the damage out of this many players. You did this much healing. You did this, 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 and this. And thus you got this reward. And then at certain tiers, it would increase your chance of getting like the super rare drops. Ah, yes. So there, there's inherent reward in getting better. And it would have to tell you that to be like, hey, like you could have increased by 0.1%. Like, I don't know, it doesn't have to be super significant, but the point has to be something because that would, that would encourage players to learn about their individual contributions. The problem with the failure thing is that um, in order for it to be rewarding to win, you would have to make it so that winning has a, um, this couldn't just be like step, like each step is equal. It would have to be like winning is a way bigger reward in my opinion. Otherwise, um, I feel like you lose some of the satisfaction and victory. Does that make sense? I think the problem is though, it's like, that would be introducing a completely new system to the game and not even talking about whether or not we could do that. It's just like, I feel like the manpower to implement something like that would be oh, it'd very, be super very, odd, yeah. It, yeah. And I think the reality is the amount of like, I guess like monetary reward that Anet would get for doing such a thing would not zero ROI. The cost. Yeah. yeah there, there's, there's just no reason for them to do it. So I think it would just be easier if there was a much simpler way than, than with all of like these, complicated systems and stuff and i think the first way to do that is just have structured and tiered rewards depending on how far you get into the map big right because it's like if you get like a little bit of reward at like the start and you did well at the beginning then you kind of get that taste and you're like hmm, i want more right and then you might like go to third party resources look up more stuff talk to members of the community then people might be more inclined to like you know discuss things in like map chat or like you know in discord or like that sort of thing right it's like those would be the very basic baby steps to even get people to be receptive to this kind of information but do you agree that it would be like a an in how do i explain that it'd be let's say you get the first 20 percent, you get like two gold first 40 percent you get five gold the first 60 percent you get 10 gold first 80 percent like you see you see how it would like dramatically increase as you go and then when you win it would be way more gold yeah i mean i think that's great in theory but i think no other boss does it by like percentage right like the closest thing i can think of that is like raid bosses right it's like you get to 50 percent, you get like three magnetized shards as like pity reward i think it would be better to have pre-events that show you what you need to do in the main fight right it's like I think actually the salt spray dragons are a really good example of that. I always like tell the groups that I lead, like, you know, if we do well on this salt spray dragon, it's a really good indicator that like the main boss fight is going to go well, right? Because it's like the CC is done fast, the DPS is done fast, people are stacking and all of these like, you know, more instance PVE sort of like concepts, you can already tell within the first boss. So I think if Anet, for example, let's say like made the salt spray dragon like part of the pre-event, more difficult but not so difficult and then provided an actual reward for that like let's say you get like a jade runestone right and those are only like 20 30 silver but that that's like a monetary reward to tell people hey you did this well that was hard you did you did it well right that would be the sort of structured tiering of like rewards that i think would be very doable yeah, it, it's, I think we should definitely be talking about uh, like simple solutions, as you said, because realistically, like massive reforms are pretty unlikely. And I know I, I, I'm really sold on this idea of tiered rewards throughout the boss. I guess the only concern I would have is that um, what happens when people go, I thought this was a 100% full reward map, right? I, I guess it I guess it couldn't be as bad as it is now. Right, because now you either have you succeed or you fail, right? You know, right now, if the Octovine fails, it's not pretty, right? It's not pretty at all. It's it's very, very toxic, right? Same thing, I, well, I, you know what's weird? I haven't seen people get toxic at Su-1. You know, I haven't seen that. I only see it when people fail stuff that they feel that they shouldn't fail, if that makes any sense, right? So if like Octovine fails, people get really mad. Pinata failing is definitely quite funny as well. So I, I guess the concern would be that that would happen. But again, like almost by definition, it will be less. Because right now, if you fail the Octavan, you get like a pathetic little pity reward at the end. And um, whereas under this like new style of system, if you fail the Octavan, well, maybe if you killed three Octovines, 
then it wouldn't be so bad, right? You'd at least get something, right? Or if you got to 20% on Su-1, you at least get something. And, you know, funnily enough, there is a boss like this. It's Tequadla's like this, right? Um, you know, and so is Triple Trouble to an extent. It's just that these rewards are very outdated, right? Like, they, they haven't really been updated for the, the way the modern Guild Wars 2 economy functions. Um, you know, you'll get one chest for every cannon phase you beat on Tequadla. And you get, like, a big chest at the end that's got some unique loot in it. Um, you know, you it's the same with Triple Trouble. For each worm you're able to kill, you either get a bronze chest for one worm, a silver chest for two worms and you get the gold chest for killing all three and you get the mega chest at the end so it, this system does exist however i do think snub has a point that you know the the pang of failure will still be there okay uh because i'm not gonna lie when you fail triple trouble and you get the silver chest you're not happy right you know you, you you're like this is this is horrible i'm you know we, we didn't get the golden worm chest this is fucking tragic I, it feels bad so I think that would still be there, I guess, but I don't think it would be a good idea um, if they could actually update like some events to be a little bit more like this. Uh, definitely Su-1. I'd like to see a lot of, um, I'd really like to see a lot of uh, experimentation with Su-1 with the rewards there. Um, and maybe some of the EOD stuff as well, because they're definitely like a lot more prone to failure than regular events, I think. So I think it'll be good. Oh, yeah, I got to address this. Oh, I, like, yeah, yeah, My yeah, idea yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. that far-fetched. I was using... Yeah already existing systems okay and altering them slightly right like i used pvp as an example pvp gives you direct feedback mm -hmm. right it says you did this much damage you did this much healing and that this is what percentage of your team what percentage of the game and then at the end is that like the greatest statistic to show if you're gonna win or not not necessarily but it's something right in open in open world in pve you don't have anything built in the game that shows anything I was just trying to use something that exists in the game that they could potentially also implement in PvE to give people some kind of feedback so that they know. Because right now, the biggest the, the biggest problem is that they just don't know. I don't think people are totally incapable or that they're stupid or anything. I think they just don't know. And if they knew, they'd probably be more inclined to, to ask or to, to try to figure it out or whatever, right? But they just don't know. Yeah, I, I, I actually hard agree. Um, when I first got into PvP in Guild Wars 2, now I've played PvP in a lot of different games, but in Guild Wars 2, I can look at and say, okay, I did a lot of damage. That's good. But look how much damage I took and how many times I died. There's a problem there. I need to figure out how to not take so much damage and how to not die so much. Um, now, obviously, structured PvP and the game mode is more complex than that because you need to know when and where to rotate had a plus one and so forth but on a personal level i know that somehow i'm taking way too much damage so my build is deficient in some way or i'm deficient as a player in some way yeah and on the pve side of things there's nothing to tell you that unless you have a dps meter that says hey man you're doing like 70 percent less dps than the rest of us what's what's going on I think stuff like this, in a way, you could... Um, I think you can do it with achievements quite nicely, and you can gamify it. I think a really good example. What if, um, for example, uh, there was a t like a tracker after every strike mission, and maybe even world bosses. There, this actually exists on Drakkar, that says you got hit by X mechanics, right? Like, every mechanic you get hit by, it increments that counter, Right? Uh, and then at the end it will say, oh look, you got hit by this many. And there's an achievement. Like, there, there are, like, uh, you know what I think would be really good? And, and this ultimately would kind of tie into, I, I guess, like just making the rewards better. Like if you could actually repeat that. So in other words, every time you do Drakkar, if you don't get hit by 20 shockwaves, you get like an extra rare or something like that. Like you can just keep doing that every single time. I think stuff like that's pretty good, right? Kind of like gamifying the idea of um, engaging with the game a little bit more. And it could, it could just give you that direct feedback. Like, hey, look, you got hit by this. Okay? You didn't get hit by this. Wow. Incredible. Amazing. And I think tying stuff like rewards into that will really motivate people to try. 
I think that exists in some capacity already, right? Like I'm just thinking on the Suwon fight, like if you jump over the shockwave or something like that and you mm -hmm. do that like 10 times, you get like a reward. Imagine if they did it where you only needed to do it like twice, right? And I, I for me personally, I don't know if other people pay attention to this, but whenever I see the little achievement thing pop up in the bottom right hand mm. corner, like the happy juices start going, you know? It's like when I see it, I just want to click on it and I want to see what I did, right? So it's like something like that, making it like very easily seen by like, you know, players that might not be paying attention to things like chat or like specific AOE bubbles would be like really great. Yeah. And having it in like lots of little mini steps as well, like as you say, right? Like have it really low. So the first time you do it, it's like, whoa, I did something. Pog. Let me go have a look at that. Um, and then you can just slowly work your up and keep doing it and get some reward there as well. I think that sort of stuff, you know, is really, really good, right? Like across the board, you know, it, it's it's something that I would love to have for um, raids and strikes too, actually. This would be like, to me, this would be like the Omega kill proof, the Giga kill proof. Imagine if there were achievements for successfully doing every mechanic in raids and fractals. And you could, they, this is something that I, I'm not sure if they would ever add this to the game. In fact, I don't think they would. But if you could link an achievement in a way that couldn't be faked, so you could say, oh yeah, I've tanked doom right and you get you have an achievement that says that you've tanked it like oh yeah i had done this on this fight like i've been able to do it therefore i deserve to be in your group i think stuff like that will be pretty interesting although maybe a little bit outside of it right um please no thing is i, I think that you know stuff like that is actually really good because it's nowhere near as arbitrary as kill proof right like this would be you need to have done this mechanic to join the group Right, that is a much lower barrier to entry than saying you need to have killed this boss um, 100 times to join this group. Or you need to have raided for like a year's worth of legendary insights to join this group. Because think about it, right? Like even a group that has say 100 LI, they're asking for 100 kills, right? That's a lot, right? That's a lot of kills. Yeah. Even 50 you know kills what? is a lot of I'm kills. Never, I'm never joining those groups, ever. Yeah. I'll make my own group and or I'll make friends to, to do the content with rather than join some random group that wants me to prove that I can mm. do the fight. That's just me personally. It's not a reflection on the game, but yeah. Yeah. You get carried, get the achievement, then you still don't know. No, that's the thing though. It would force you to do the mechanic. For example, the Doom Green achievement or title or whatever, it would be you need to do Doom Greens successfully 20 times, for example, right? Um, to, uh, let, let's say, to tank Soulless Horror, you need to have completed Soulless Horror while in the tanking position without dying five times, right? Boom, easy. Right? Um, or hell, maybe make it like three times. You could do something like that. Um, I, I don't know, like, you, you know, you need to have kited Demos five times to get the Demos kiting achievement, right? And this would just verify that, oh yeah, this player can do it. And think, how are you going to carry that? You, you, you're going to have to beat the fight, right? Like, and do the mechanic. You have to engage with that mechanic to get these achievements. I think stuff like that's pretty good, right? Uh, you could even have like titles, right? You're going to be a title for this. So you could use that as the link, right? Because right now in the game, the only way to guarantee that someone yeah. has a title or has an achievement or rather has done something is with a title, right? This is basically unfakeable KP, right? Is what a title Doom is. Doom tanker. Yeah. If you, well, I guess technically voice in the void is pretty fakeable, but you know, like if the, if the achievements were better designed, it would be unfakeable anyway. Right, but there you go. 